Hi, I'm Jules. I'm answering the question, should I send my child to preschool, childcare, or an early education setting if they are presenting with speech and language delay? Overall, the answer is typically yes, in terms of it exposes your child to lots of other children, obviously, but also routines, exposes them to a curriculum, whether it be books, songs, and also it helps them to follow and understand some instructions. Um, so we do recommend that social environment, whether it be a play group, preschool, childcare. When parents ask what to look for, some key things to think about are smaller environments. So more staff or more educators and you know more adults to, to each kind of group or number of children is going to be more effective and your child's gonna obviously feel more supported. Especially if they are presenting with speech and language difficulties, it's important for them to feel supported and not feel lost in a, in a large group or in a big center. And some of those smaller places could be uh, also like community run, not-for-profits. Some of those tend to have educators with more experience in, um, in general, in what I have seen over 14 years, visiting a range of different preschools and childcares. But you can always ask what's, what kind of um, educators are here and how do they support the children? The other thing to look for is routines like what kind of uh, activities are organized. So activities that are organized throughout the day and flow regularly in that order of like we do group time, then we do snacks, then it's outdoor play, really help a child because the child brain and the adult brain loves routine and it helps uh, us build confidence. And it's, it's like a scaffolding frame in which we learn and develop skills. So that typically can be a really helpful learning environment for children when um, everyone knows what's happening and, and it's, you know, this is the routine of the day and we follow this and obviously within reason, if the child doesn't want to do something to have an alternative, um, you know, activity or, or whatnot. Um, so yes, yeah, so having a smaller ratio of, wait, yes, yeah, so having more adults to children ratio, like a smaller center, having organized routines and having like a curriculum or where a center is aware of child development. So including things like sensory play, songs, dress up and um, imaginative play, having different areas like a sand pit. So having those educators really understand those key elements and, um, and to follow those. Um, some things that haven't been, I find most effective is if you go into a center and it's extremely loud and the children seem to be um, not really sure of what they're doing. It might be a large group kind of with lots of loud vocalizing. I mean, often, you know, not just during an activity or a free play, so, so to speak. Um, and some other things that may not be as effective is if there just seems to be a large number of children in say one area. So they're not kind of broken up or split into smaller activities or groups. That can also be a tricky time for children with speech and language delay. Um, some other things that may be tricky or to be aware of, aware of is if there is a high staff turnover. So you want your child to be able to connect and, and grow and learn with educators that stay there and that are there quite often who will know and um, respond to your child and have that connection. Um, so yeah, they're just some basic tips and tricks, but as always, trust your gut instinct, go and visit centers, chat to the director, chat to the educator, and really get a grasp of how they feel about working with children and you'll you'll get um, a vibe, so to speak. Um, and also look on, um, chat around to local families and join mums groups on different Facebook groups in your area and have a chat and yeah, get some support there. So I hope you found that helpful. Feel free to ask uh, any questions and I'm happy to give some generalized advice.